Okay, we're going to go today. This Monday, we're going to go to the second reading of the portion of Ayakel Pukude. As the two portions are together uh, this week, we're holding on chapter 35, verse number 30. God is called Bishem B'tzalel in the name of B'tzalel ben Uri, ben Uri. B'tzalel, the son of Uri, ben Chur, the son of Chur, the Mati Yehuda, who was from the tribe of Yehuda. So it actually says, who is this person, Chur? Chur is ben Neisho Miriam. This is a nephew of Miriam. So, uh, uh, B'tzalel was a grandnephew of Miriam. He was a grandnephew of Mishnah, I mean, a, grand, a grandson of, a great grandson of, of Miriam, and a nephew, great great grandnephew of uh, Mishnah Benu. Imala Yisru Achlekim, and God filled him with the Spirit of God, the Chachma with wisdom, Bisfuna with understanding, Bidas with knowledge, Bachalam Allah, and all the work and the craftsmanship of this, of this Mishnah. Lachshin Machshav is to be able to master weaving lasses bazav to do in the gold bakesev and in the silver balacheshes and in the copper. Bacheshes seven in the crafting of the stone. The male is to fill in the settings. Bacheshes eight in the crafts of the wood. Lasses that was done l'chol malachas machshavis with all manner of thoughtful work. Well, Adrei say and he put in his heart l'nasim believe he put in the heart of Lili of Ben Achisama. He put both him and Ali and Manachi Sama, the Mati Dan, to the tribe of Dan. As she says, God put the tribe of uh, uh, Betzala, Yehuda, and he put the tribe of Dan, and he put them together, Mishav and Dan. Ali was in the tribe of Dan, Minayoid Mishavita, he was in the lowest of the tribes. The sons of the handmaids of Bila Zilpa, Dan was Bila's son. Yet uh, God compared him, Ali to Betzala, in the work of the, the Mishka. And he, Betzal, was the greatest of the tribe of Yehuda. To fulfill what he said, the prince was not recognized before a poor man. The God, both the prince of Israel, tribe of Judah, and both the, uh, the lowest of the tribes, which was the tribe of Dun, is equal. Meleis of Chachmas Levi, they wish to put into their heart wisdom. Last says to do Komlechas Kodesh, to do all the work, all the craftsmen's work. They wish to give them the capability to do all the kind of which did in the concept of, uh, of, of, of uh, embroidery and the, the purple wool, but tailors by Ghanan, with Tlashani in the purple, the crimson wool, with and in the linen. They did all the, all the manner of the work, and master weavery. Chapter 36, verse number one. All wise men, which God gave wisdom, usvuna and understanding, behemah within them, adas to know, last is to do. All the work in the holy base, the holy work, whatever God had commanded. Verse number two, Vika Meshel Batalam, Meshiko Batalam, and Saliyah, and Aliyah, Aliyah, and to Aliyah. A call Chacham Ish, and to all those that were smart. Chacham Aslave, the wisdom of the heart. Asinos Hashem Chach, which David gave wisdom. The Liba in their hearts. Call Hashem Nasa Liba in the Karva, whoever had the heart lifted him to come close. Alamalacha to the work, lastly, say, said to do. They took, they, they took them before Mesha. All the offerings, what they brought, and they saw the children of Israel. To do the service of the Holy. Lastly, they said to do it. And they brought him more gifts. The, the donations kept on coming in into the base of meat, into the, into the service. And all the wise men who were doing the work of the Holy One came. Each man to his work, which they did. The people are bringing very much. They have made them more than enough for the work. Now she says, yes, this was the first and the only capital campaign that was phenomenal. 
They brought more than was needed. More than was needed for the service of the base of each. So I made sure we look over matters and made sure an announcement. And they made an announcement in the can. Lame ish be isha yas malacha. Stop bringing any more donations. The tumas akedish. The kala on the hobby and the people stopped to bring. Hashem's expression of holding back. They held themselves back from bringing the uh, the sack to bring any more. And there was enough work to fish in for them to do all the work. That's to say, say, I said, and there was even left over. That's to say, the work of bringing, I mean, the bringing that was the, the, for them to bring was also a work. So the work to bring, the, 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 to bring money and, and different uh, needs for the Beis Amidas was Baruch Hashem enough to do the Malacha. I said, the Hush says it was uh, the Hush says like to be hardly covered. It's hardly something to have a said it was more. All the, all the wise hearted people performed in the work. That's the Malachat Amish to do the work of the mission. As see it is, Shesh Mansus, that they made 10 beautiful curtains consist of twisted fine linen. Stainless white garment of blue and purple wool with glass shining crimson wool. The Ruvim was it was cherubim work, like the work of the master weaver. Also, they made them. Each and each curtain was twenty-eight cubits. Each 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 width each 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 curtain was was the width of four cubits. It was one one uh, one amount to each and every idea. Then he took the five videos and he put them together. He wove them together one to the other. He connected them together. He connected five, five to each one. And he made beautiful loops of blue wool. Inside of one, one curtain, one of the five. He said, at the end of its corner, so too he did 50 loops on the other side of the five other curtains. Hamishim Lulaisasi made 50 loops on one one and Bira Akas on one the curtain. Hamishim Lulaisasi made 50 loops on the second curtain. And he made 50 loops on the second curtain. Magbila Salus Akas Alachas, the loops corresponded one to another. Yes, and then he made Hamishi Kratz, he told me made 50 golden clasps. He took the five and five and he connected them through the loops and through the, the hang, the, uh, the, the, uh, the claps. He connected them together, and now the two parts became one. And that was that made the Mishkan one. Was this covering covering the whole Mishkan? As we know, it covered the whole Mishkan, and uh, it was a beautiful covering. Yasi then he made a second curtain. Yasi, this was the covering of Ezim, of the goats here. Yasi he said he made a curtain for a goat here, the tent over the Mishkan. He made this curtain, it was 11 curtains. Each curtain was 30. So it went over the, the first cover. The other one was 28. This was 30. It was still four, but it was an extra curtain. So this was for all 11 curtains. Then he connected five of them together, and then he connected the other six. Came 11. And brought them. He did exactly what he did with the other one. Brought them all together. He asked the He asked the again. Fifty loops on one of them. Fifty loops on the other. And he put them together. He made fifty copper clasps. He asked the to connect them. And now the second turkey became the second covering. Became one entity. He asked me, say, and then he made a third one, third covering that was only on the top of the Mishkan. That was made a covering for the top of the tent. But this was a this was this was a this was the color of, of a dark color, uh, the goat's hair. And this was made out of ram skins dyed red and covering made of the koshim of this animal who had beautiful, beautiful uh, skin. Yes, then he made the cross, then he made planks. The Mishkan. Atsi Shitti made the planks out of wood. 
Location wood. Esel Amis, each plank was 10 cubits. So each plank was 10 cubits high and a, and, a, and, a, and a cubit and a half, the width of each plank. They are just like a shaft. You make two, each plank had two square pegs on the bottom. We should love this. They were equal one to the other. That's what he made to each and every plank. He made two yardes, two hands on the bottom of the plank. You remember the picture I showed you. He made 20 planks to the, to the, for the southern side. But he, since he made 20 planks, each plank had two hands. So that's why he made He made 40 silver sockets because each plank had two sockets. Each plank had two adonim, two sockets. The stay your days up to two the hands of each plank. They are done him and two are done him to uh, two sockets. Under each plank, the stay your days up to his two hands. Well, let's tell our Mishkan Shane this is the second side of the Mishkan. The fast stuff, but also he also made 20 planks. I've done him in the 40 sockets, castle of silver. They are done him each plank had. When each plank had two sockets, each one had two planks, two sockets. Verse 27, Oyakis and Mishki Yaman to the eastern side of the Mishkan, he made six planks. That was a Shisha Kurash. Now, after all, so much we say, then he made two other planks to put in the corner of the Chasayim at the end of the Mishkan. So those two planks united the Mishkan. Oh, you assume in Lamata, they were matched evenly below. The Yachter, he said, they were matched at the top. A Rachel to Basa Echos, the one ring, Cain, Asa, the Shtay, Masa, we'd say, that's what he did to both corners. Oh, Yishmane, Kroshim, Adem, Kassim, Shisha. There were eight planks and their silver sockets, 16 sockets, two stockets on the on the one plank, two sockets on the one. A Yachter, Bricha, Yachter, Shittim, then he made bars of acacia wood. A Misha, Lakai, Shittel, Amishka, and Echos. Five for the planks of the one side of Mishkan, the Chamisha Brichim, the Kai Sheitzela Mishkan, the five bars, the planks on the side of the other side of Mishkan, the five bars for the, for the planks on the rear side of the Mishkan on the eastwards. So there was, a, there was these bars that united the Mishkan. Yas is a Bricha Tichan, then he made the middle bar. Levreyach Besecha Trigrashen, there was a hole in the middle of all the Trashen. Which the which the uh, middle of all the in the middle of all the, the beams, and there was a bar that went through this or a miraculous bar that went through all the entire Mishkan in the middle of it. from one side of the Mishkan to the other side of the Mishkan. That means it went twenty planks one way through the back of the the back of the Mishkan towards the other side of the Mishkan, one solid bar. And he overlaid all these planks with gold. They were made out of wood, but they were covered with gold. The tabes of Zav and all the rings were gold. They were holders for the bars. He overlaid the, the bars with gold. Then he made a dividing curtain of tchelas, vagam, metlashani, of purple, blue, purple, and crimson wool. And also of linen. They were all entwined. Master this was a mastery weaver work. Also, Kruve made them cherubim, this curtain that divided between the holy and the holy of holes. Ayasa Abba Mudin Shitin, then he made four pillars of acacia wood. He overlaid them with gold. Then he made four, there were, there were hooks with the four sockets and, and then four sockets. Ayas Masa, the Pesach, I made. And then he made a screen for the entrance of the tent. He made them all out of crimson wool. And he made the entrance to the temple at, at five uh, pillars. As from very material, he overlaid the loops and the bands with gold. And their sockets were copper. I mean, the sockets, the, the, the five sockets were copper. 
Chapter 37, verse number one. We asked Bitsal Lasar and then Bitsal made the, the ark. I actually shit he made an occasion with a Masai Vachetzi ark. It was two cubits, two and a half cubits, it's length. Baham of a Chetzi ark, but a cubit and a half its width. Baham of a Chetzi Kamas and a cubit and a half its height. Ashes of Yas Bitsal, since he devoted himself to the work more than the other wise men, it's called on his name. I asked the Tzal, even though there were hundreds of people working in the Mishkan, but the Tzal gave his life up to this Mishkan, and it was called on his name. He covered, overlaid everything with gold. He buys him, of course, from the inside and the outside. I asked the he made a golden crown around it. That's what we know. He made three boxes, one box of gold, a box of wood in between, and a box of gold within the box of wood. And it was covered the wood with the gold, and there was a crown around this ark. Yes, Isagabata boys and they made four gold rings. Alabat made some in the four corners of this ark. two rings on one side. and two rings on the other side. they made poles of acacia wood. and he covered them with gold. And he brought the inserted the poles into the rings of Mishkan on the sides of the ark, lost a sasarin to carry the ark. And he made the only made on the ark a cover, pure gold. Tor, a Messiah of the ark was two and a half cubits in its long, and a cubit and a half its width. Ayash take Ruven on top of this cover, he made two golden cherubim. Miksha was made one piece of gold from the cover. Mishnake serves Akapedis for the two sides of the cover. So the cover and the cherubim were made out of one piece of gold. Kruvech and Mikotza Zed, there was a cherub from this side. The Kruvech and Mikotza Zed, there was a cherub from the other side. Mina Kapedis, from the cover itself, Asa Sakruvin, he made these cherubim. He stayed tovis from most of the size of the of the of the cup. I hear a proven captain of fire when these cherubim had their wings spread upwards. The mile of Sechim of Kafeim, the shielding the ark. The wings went like this, as we saw the picture. The wings went like this over the ark. They covered the top of the ark. Allah Kapreis on the cover. Uknayim Ishal Achiv, and they had a face. They faced one another. Ella Kapreis. The faces were towards the ark, towards the cover, up near Kruv in the face of the, of the cherub. Then we asked the Shosh he made the table. I'd say Shifti made the table. This is a table that had the, the Lech Lapani made it out of wood. I'm a sign of the ark. It was two and a half, two cubits long. And one cubit width. The arm of a Chetzikamas and a cubit and a half the height of this table. He covered this table with gold. He made a golden crown around this table. Like he made by the other, a golden crown around the table. He asked him to get a tape of Savarin and he made a frame of a handbreadth width all around the table. He asked him to put a crown. The crown was put upon that frame that he put around the table. Then he made four cast gold rings. And he put the, the four rings on the four corners of the four legs of this table. The opposite of its frame. The, 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 the holder, the tabas, the rings were to carry this table. He asked about the matter, should they make poles of acacia wood? They covered the poles with. Gold, lost a shulchan to carry the table. Ayasa Kalem, then he made the implements, the, the, the vessels, Ashel al shulchan, which we do on the table, as karis of its forms, as kapis of its spoons, as maniyakis of its half pipes, as kashis of its, uh, its uh, supports, ashe yosobem zav tahar, which was made out of pure, pure gold. And that completes the chumish. For today. We go to the Tanya of the day. We 
We're completing chapter 35 of Tanya. As explained in chapter 12, only in the case of Sadiqim are their evil middis themselves transformed into holiness. In others, anybody who's not a tzaddik, the, uh, it's the, only the animal soul garments, its faculties of expression by the means of which the mitzvah is accomplished are absorbed into holiness. Not the middah itself. The one doesn't change his character so easily because the character is who he is. What he does, he makes sure that his character is garmented properly. So he takes the character that he has and he makes sure that it's garmented, that, it, that it's channeled correctly. And that's really what the Avayt of Abedini is. Not to, he's never going to change his essence. He's going to change the way he controls himself, the way he expresses himself, the way he, the way he lives his life. So that's what he's going to change. And, this, and therefore, since the essence of his attribute, his character, is never changed, therefore he has to battle with it constantly. Because he has to make sure that his true character, which might be negative, is going to be controlled. And that's the way to... Nevertheless, this fact does not prevent the light of the shina from suffusing an entire body. That that he has in Nefesh of Bahamas, Dr. Rebbe says, that doesn't change that God can rest in his midst, that God rests within a Jew. When he does his service to God, we, even though he's not a tzaddik and he hasn't transformed his evil character, the Abishtah rests between him, between, with him, as the author of explains. Because these evil midas that everyone has, are subjugated to the holiness, and against their will they say Amen. Expression in the Gemara, that really our character doesn't want to say Amen, but we go against our will and we say Amen. They force themselves to say to do, to do the right thing. So we overcome ourselves, our nature, and we say, nevertheless, we're going to do what's right. That's a bainini. That's a bain little man. I day is Gabriel's not for the kiss through the strengthening of his divine soul, the Bemeche, which is in his mind, which rules, masters over his heart. So I discussed in chapter 12, although the emotions of a baby had not been transformed into good, because he still has an Ephesh of Bahamas, he still has an animal soul, he nevertheless has the power to control them by the means of his mind, to contemplate on God's greatness. In this way, the Baini can direct his heart as he chooses, in so far as actual performance of mitzvahs are concerned. And at that moment, his nefesh of Bahamas, his evil character, who befinners goes, he becomes an exile. Then you send, you send your character into exile. Vishaino, you put him to sleep. So when one, when one exercises natural mastery or brain over heart by contemplating God's greatness in a state of exile and speed, meaning impotent, as, impotent, it has no power, as mentioned in chapter 12. And therefore, since the Baini masters mind over matter, Mind over character, mind over his natural soul. Therefore, this concept is, does not prevent the Shekhinah, the presence of God, from resting on one's body at that time. And Dr. Rebbe goes now to explain how it's possible for one mitzvah, one mitzvah, to draw the Shekhinah upon one's body. Because the rest, this resting of the shkina means that the power of the animal soul clothed in the act that constitutes the mitzvah that I'm doing at this present time, meaning the power in his hand that he's putting on tefillin, or the power in your hand that you're giving stalker, 
or the power in the hand that I'm using to do any mitzvah that I do. That power is actually absorbed in the divine light of God. It becomes one with God in a perfect unity at that moment, even though he still has nefesh abamis, even though he still has an animal soul. But that mitzvah is united with Hakadosh Baruch with God. And then thereby, one draws down a ray of light wherein the particular power has been absorbed upon to totally do the totality of the animal soul throughout the body and upon the entire body itself. The ray of the divine light illuminates one animal soul and his body in a manner of an encompassing light from above, from his head until his feet. That, this explains the expression, which we mentioned in Zohar at the beginning of this chapter. We mentioned the Zohar that says, Every Jew has a fire, the Shechina, that's fire, that is, that is shining on, on his head. The Shechina Shaya Reishin, that the Shechina rests on his head, not in his head, on his head, upon his head. Simply Al, meaning encompassing him from above. Therefore, there's another expression. The Gemara says, whenever there's an assembly of 10 Jews, the presence of God rests on them. Means that the light of the divine presence does not permeate them, it illuminates them from above. So, in the explanation, he says, here after various levels of resting of the Shekhinah have been discussed, as it rests upon the divine soul, upon the specific faculties of the animal soul that performs the mitzvah. Upon the animal soul and upon the whole body. The latter two is only an encompassed by, but not permeated with the light of the skin. The godly soul is, is totally absorbed by God. The body is surrounded by God, is encompassed by God. The light of the skin encompasses the body. Within this level, we find further submission at the level which is affects the mitzvah. That which encompasses any gathering of 10 Jews, even who are not engaged in the midst, 10 Jews who come together to have a conversation, 10 Jews that come together to enjoy life, whatever it is. And that the Abish to Shinta Shire, God is there. God encompasses them. That's what the Mishnah, that's what the, that's what the that's what it says. We pick the others. And perhaps we may distinguish yet another level that which rests upon each individual Jew, even if it is not occupied with it. After that, it goes on to state that variety of the levels in which Ashkenna becomes manifest does not indicate any change or, 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 or plurality in the light of God. God, there's no separation. It's all earth, it's all an, a beautiful light. Variety means merely the different objects of life, the divine soul, the animal soul, the body, and so on, receive it different ways. The body receives it different ways. But the Eir Avai, the Shina, is present in all aspects the same exact way. Like, that's where we consider it light. Light shines everywhere. The question is the way, the way, the way it comes into different things. So, the light can come into one place one way, depends the bottle, the vessel that it's going into. So the vessel that it's going into, that's the way the light is going to shine. So too, the way the Shekhinah comes into different entities, the way it comes into my godly soul is one way. The way it comes into my animalistic soul is another way. The way it comes into my body is another way. The way it comes into above my body is another way. The way it comes into so everything has its level, its level of revelation. Now, none of these various forms in which the light of the spin is manifest 
If the chin is gilu ain't safe, means the way in which the ain't safe is revealed. God, the ain't, ain't, the ain't safe is everywhere. It's only that he's concealed from his, from his creation. Thus, the uniqueness of the manifestation of the Shekhinah lies in the revelation of Eden Seif. So it's in its revelation, it's not in the Eid. There's no difference in the Eid Shekhinah. The Shekhinah is here in every situation, every place equally. And therefore, in a nikka shina shalim by his bottom, there's no change in the light. There's no change in God. And there's no multiple, or I don't think multiples. The fact that the shina manifests itself at some point, meaning in one soul through the performance of a mitzvah, where it's previously not been manifest, does not point to any change in God. Nor does the various forms of manifestation indicate plurality within him. Doesn't change God. It changes the human being. That's the free choice of a human being. How much you want to re receive the sun. How much you want to reveal of this earth. But this earth is equally to everybody. The earth Hashem is open to everybody. Whether he's righteous, whether he's wicked. This, the Abish is with everybody at all times. It's what I want to reveal or how much I want to reveal. And that's where the difference is. It is a difference between my revelation and your revelation. You might be much greater revelation and I might be a lesser revelation. But, but God, the light is there. The Eid Hashem, Eid Saif, Baruch Hu, is, is there equally to the Tzaddik as he, as he is to the Russian. The Isabel Sanhedrin, as the Gemara says in the Musafta Sanhedrin, recorded a certain heretic told Rabbi Gamliel, Amitiko Be'ashchintashaya, you say that the Shekhinah rests upon the assembly of ten. How many Shekhinahs do you have? Rabbi Gamliel said, you have a one son that goes into ten houses. How many sons are there? There's one son. Some they can have one window in his house. Some they can have his whole front of his house. is all windows. Your glass in frontage. His whole wall is windows. Same sun that's going into this beautiful all windows is going into one window. One sun. Despite the multiple windows, there's one light. The same holds true, even where the light appears differently from one place to another. Sunlight through stained glass windows or various hues that remain nevertheless unchanged. So let's say your front windows are red. So now you're going to go, you have beautiful stained glass windows. You're going to have many colors coming through your window. That means the sun has changed. That means you have changed your windows. Everybody has windows. Or they don't want windows. <laughs> Everybody has windows to his neshama, to the Eid Hashem. You can have more windows. You can have more openings. You can have less openings. So to the various modes in which the light of the skin is manifest. The light remains the same without any change or division. There's no division in this light. Light is light. That's why it's called the Hasidut Ur Pachet. Simple. Light. Any difference in manifestation are attributable only to the way the light is received by the object which it's manifest. So the Abish that gives a light, gives a early safe, and now it's up to us to how we want to receive this light, or how much we want to receive this light, or which way we want to receive this light. 
و همسکل یاوی از آخر بینز آف مری و این کانسپس و همسکل یاوی و اینترنتیج Those who are intelligent will understand. If you have intelligence, you'll understand. And if you don't, I tried my best. And if Siddhis would add, the valid will, re- will proceed. Not only the intelligent, but it's also important to be devoted, to be devout to the concept, to, to put yourself to, the, to, to this, to this Haskalah. to give yourself over to this intelligence. So it's not just, oh, if you have intelligence, a lot of people are intelligent, but seemingly they can get the concept anyway because they're not committed to this intelligence. They, 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 they don't want to be committed to whatever reason to accomplish this intelligence. And uh, that completes the beautiful chapter 35 of Tanya, and it completes the chitas of today. Uh, today is the 20th day of the month, which is the chapter 97 to chapter 103. You do chapter 97 to chapter 103, you would do Pitas. Wish you all a beautiful, wonderful, happy, and healthy day. And I'll see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Continue.